Hello, I'm Jerry Hacks, and in this video, I'm going to teach you Kotlin in under five minutes. Open up the Kotlin Playground. You can navigate to it by play.kotlinlang.org. If you go to this website here, you'll land on a page that looks pretty similar to what I have. The version shouldn't matter. You just want to make sure that you compile down to the JVM here. Let's go ahead and remove everything that you see here. Now we're going to write out our first function in Kotlin. Now, the way you do this is by writing fun, the function name, and the return type. In this case, we only have fun, main, open parentheses, close parentheses, and no return type. And that's because this right now is implicitly returning a void. If you're coming from C++ or Java, same concept. A variable is defined with the var keyword, the name of the variable, and the return type. Then you can set the initial value to any kind of string that you want. The var signifies that this is a mutable property, meaning that you can change the value of this. But if we decided to change this from a string to an integer, that wouldn't work. And in fact, you would get the error, the integer literal does not conform to the expected type string. If you switch that from one, two, three, integer to a string, it works. To make a variable immutable, meaning that it cannot be changed, change var to val. Now, if you try to reassign the val, you'll get an error that a val cannot be reassigned. The variable type is optional. You don't really need this if you already know that this is going to be a string. So if you remove this, it compiles fine. Kotlin supports your basic types of numbers, doubles, ints, and floats, booleans, characters, strings, and arrays. To create a list of string values, you just need to set the variable to list of and the type of the list with the constructor invocation. If you wanted to set an initial value on a list, you just have to add the value within the list of constructor invocation. And this can take any variable amount of data that you'd like. In order to give a return type to a Kotlin function, you can use the colon towards the end of the, the function constructor. This function is returning a list of type strings. In order to return the list of string value, we can just return a list of with the value within it, just as we did above here. Invoke the function as you would normally do. You just call the function name with the constructor invocation, and you can see the new value printed out. Colin gives us expressive statements that help us simplify functions and pretty much anything else. I'm going to show you how we can simplify this even more. Put your cursor at the colon all the way to the return, set an equal, remove the last curly brace, and if you run this code, you see that new value is returned. All we're doing here is we're implicitly saying the value of this function is being returned as a list of type string. The list of operator in Kotlin is an immutable list, meaning it creates a list once and you can't add or remove or do anything with the elements inside of it once it's been created. If you want to change the list to be a mutable property, there are a couple of ways of doing it. The first way is by using the to mutable list extension on this function. This just means that it transforms the list return type to a type of mutable list, and now we can add values to it. The other way is by changing list of to mutable list of and removing the dot to mutable list. Kotlin has a concept of data classes, which are basically plain old Java objects. You may have heard of that terminology used in the Java world. The entire purpose of the data class in Kotlin is to store information. You just have to specify data class along with the class name, which is usually following a title case format. And then you can specify the constructor parameters directly within the parentheses. I have created one parameter of first name of type string. In the case of a data class constructor at the top here, you have to specify the type of string, otherwise the data class doesn't know what to expect. You can think of a data class as a contract in your code. I have a second parameter, age, that is of type int. In order to use the my data class structure, create a variable that points to the my data class structure here. And notice I don't, I'm not using new here. In Kotlin, you don't have to do that. There are two ways of specifying the parameters here. These are immutable properties, meaning that these can't be changed, but they are also required properties, meaning that whenever you create a new object of my data class, you have to give it all of the values for the parameters that are specified here. I've set the first name to Cornelius and I've set the age to 30. Now we can print this out and you can see the first name, Cornelius and age 30. Kotlin also gives us access to something called named parameters. So now we can declare that first name means Cornelius and age points to 30. This is very useful when you have multiple parameters of the same type. If we had another parameter of last name, it's very possible that someone could get confused and accidentally set 
the last name to the first parameter instead of the second parameter. If you wanted a regular class that does maybe some kind of logic, you can do that by just removing the data and declaring a class with the name of the class user repository, and then your opening and closing braces. To loop through a structure like a list or a map, Kotlin gives us a bunch of wonderful functions that one such function is for each, that you just have to do users.foreach, and this will loop through every single item in this list. Now you'll notice I'm using something called it. It is just the implicit variable inside of users.each. I could have instead named this to user, and it would work fine, but Kotlin gives us it, and it's pretty well understood that it is an implicit variable, and you can use it in any of your Lambda functions. Instead of switch in the Java world, Kotlin uses something called when. I've created a structure here that will look at each item in the users list. If it matches user one, it's gonna print out I am user one. Otherwise for anything else, it's going to print out none. Any when statement will automatically break so you don't have to write the break syntax. Kotlin has a lot to offer. Plenty of extension functions, navigating loops by using ranges. You can also have conditional expressions and companion objects with static functions and static variables. What I've presented today pretty much gives you everything that you need to start with any project that you want to. All of those will get you set up to do really well with Kotlin. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe so I can continue making more of these. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jerry.